The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to, to you all hearts are opening, all, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, Holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world. Evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of the word. <clears throat> A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love which we loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places, in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Jerusalem. 
Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, <clears throat> Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but that in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be, may, may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Today's Gospel reading sets out for us a world of we were once this way and now we are this way. This goes right along with what Paul was saying in the letter to the Ephesians. There is a place and a way in which you once lived, and now there is you in Christ. And the mechanism of how that happened is laid bare for us in that one single verse that we all know by heart. We know it either because it was drilled into us as children in Sunday school, or because, well, we got used to seeing it on large sheets behind home plate. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. But what I'd like to point out to you is the word so. For God so loved the world. Too often as we read these texts, we hear so as an amplifier. So loved, meaning so loved. He loved the world so much. But in this context, so actually could mean something very different. For God loved the world in this way. He so loved, meaning he loved the world in this way, that he sent his only begotten Son. And this is the reality that confronts everyone who comes to know Jesus. God chose to show God's love for humanity by sending his Son. And that that Son <clears throat> gave up his life for us and for the sins of the whole world. That changes who you are. When you realize somebody loves you completely, it changes who you are. Those who've ever fallen in love before, really truly fallen in love, or even, God willing, has stayed in love for a long period of their lives, know that it changes you. Being in love with someone transforms the way you look at the world. And this is exactly what Paul is trying to point out, that the love of God has changed how he looks at the world and how all others who have been loved by God should actually see themselves in the world. As he puts it, let them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and tell of his acts with shouts of, prayer, uh, shouts of joy. This, this is a reality contained within these texts that mark out the difference between who we were and who we have become. And that, that difference, the difference, the change over time in a disciple between when they first came to know the Lord and as they mature in their faith is a remarkable one, but nothing is remarkable as a change before you knew God, and once you began to just begin to understand the depth of love God has for you. But the reality is that human beings, often when they are confronted with the truth, choose a lie. When they are confronted with light, they go toward darkness. When they, when they are confronted with love, they turn to hate. That is the great tragedy of humankind. It's probably the reality, the historical reality of the 20th century, and unfortunately it looks like it's turning into the reality of the 21st. How much more then, how much more do we need to work to introduce people to the God who loved them in this way, that the Son was sent from the Father? Not to condemn, but that the world through him might be saved. 
too much the world has heard condemnation from us. And what the world needs to hear from us is love and compassion that is saving. And it is possible for love and compassion to be saving. It's doable. It's profound. It's true. It's deep. And it's real. And it can transform lives. Jesus, as he spoke to Nicodemus that night, was trying to explain to someone who was well-versed in the law and the teaching of the Torah that they had missed a central point. He was trying to explain to Nicodemus that God was doing a new thing that was entirely different than Torah, but entirely in line with the Torah. And this is what we are called to do. We are called to go out to the world and preach a, a life with our lives, with our love, with our compassion. We are to proclaim to the world that God is doing something profound, not to condemn it, not to set up rules, not to set up judgment, but to set up salvation, to make real the change that can overcome us. And this Lent, as we begin to turn in toward the finality of Lent and Holy Week, it's time for us to really face who we are, who we were, who we are, and who we can be in Christ. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God of mercy and compassion, your word calls us home to faith and love. Accept all we offer you this day in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Amen. Eucharistic Prayer 2. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Redeemer. He is your living Word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfilment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering therefore his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
we break this bread, communion in Christ's body once broken. Let your church be the wheat which bears its fruit in dying. If we have died with him, we shall live with him. If we hold firm, we shall reign with him. The gifts of God are for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The body of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Giver of life, you enlighten all who come into the world. Fill our hearts with the splendor of your grace, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory, Glory to God, God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and reign with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.